what would make someone have a high index of suspicion is a problem with the anus? What would be the things you would probably hear from someone calling you up? So what will happen is that failure for that intestine to make it through that tunnel creates a spectrum of problems. One problem could be that instead of hitting the anus of the skin at one point, it may just stop short and take a little turn up or back to where the vagina, let's say, would be in a girl or the, the, the scrotum and the urethra in the boy. And so there's a little fistula. So the opening is actually not in the right place. It's a little bit displaced. It's displaced anterior if you lie on your back. That spectrum of problems is called an anterior displaced anus. And you could have someone who's very, very constipated because the hole not only is the right size, but it's actually in the wrong place. So you have all kinds of variants where it could be totally blocked, it could be shifted to the side, and the key in the initial thinking, there's no stool that first 24 hours, big red flag? There is a big red flag. The, and the bigger red flag would be to find out why we're not stooling is to look at the bottom. So for someone who's got the other end of the variant, and that would be totally absent anus, the bottom, the, the, the buttocks, the muscles are absent. So it's a flat bottom. It's like we call a rocker bottom. And where the anus should be, there's nothing. It's plain. It's absolute skin. That's obvious, but sometimes you see a little bit. So sometimes not only do you see a little bit, but you see a little pooching, like a little membrane. So when they try to stool within 24 hours, that, that meconium, it's called baby poop, actually comes out onto the skin. And you can see the discoloration. That's actually considered a low lesion. Low meaning that the intestine has gone through the levator muscle onto the perineum, but the muscles themselves work great. The biggest problem, the biggest problem with imperfect anus, it's not just that the stool is not coming out because the, the intestine's not there. It's a whole range of congenital problems. Without muscles, you're unable really to hold your stool. But it also may be... It also, okay. it also may be related to things like your bladder, your urine doesn't come out because that's not formed well. It may be that you have um, issues where there's a communication with the, where the intestine, instead of coming down into the perineum or that bottom part of the skin, actually meets up with the urethra, which is the tube where urine comes out. It could meet into the bladder. It could go into the vagina. So when you have a baby who has no opening on the bottom, there's other issues you have to worry about. But if they do go through that levator sling and they just miss, so there's something a little, you see like an little extra skin where you know there should be an anus there and you see a little black dot, but there's no opening, that's called a bucket handle deformity. That's a low lesion. Low lesions are easy to fix. You just open up the skin there and you take it out. So a big variation from a little problem to major problem. Right. High lesion, major problem. Low lesion, much less so. And the most important part to think about that is not the actual operation, but rather what the prognosis is for our ability to really be able to control our stooling. And like anything, we have a problem like this, you would look for other problems in the body too. Right? right. In fact, if, you remember, if we look at this problem in itself, we say, wait a minute, it's also associated in about 30 or 40 percent of things with other problems. Again, we, like the tracheoesophageal fistula, it's associated with. We also look for things like the heart problems, the VSDs, or the ventral septal defects, the holes in the heart. We also look for problems with the bones, especially down below where the, the backbone actually goes all the way down to something called the sacrum, that's the bottom bone. There's usually missing for people with imperfect anus. We look at the TEFs, we look at the renal problems, again, with ultrasound, and the limb problems. So again, it's associated. What also is interesting is because, remember I said the GU problem or the bladder could be very distended because the nerves using being able to contract the bladder are not functioning well. It's in the same sort of spectrum. We also have something called a tethered cord. A tethered cord means as, your, as you grow, your spine, your nerves grow. But if it's tethered, if it's held on to a piece of the bone and starts elongating, you can actually ruin some of those nerves. And so these are things you have to look for, even if there's a low lesion. It's, this is a kind of surgery you should not be done by someone who does it once every 10 years. It should be a place that has all the modalities and have someone who's doing this on a regular basis. 